Okay, so uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to convert one of our old programs to object-oriented programming. And so I came here to, we've already done the, the window one before, but here on our first kind of one is image and callbacks. And this was our one of our first programs that we made. So I'm simply going to come down here to this code and click here. I want you guys to do the same thing. I click copy. And then I opened up a, uh, a, a new file, and I just simply pasted this stuff, which was from that website um, right here. I just simply pasted this into here. Now what I'm doing is I've just made some space at the top, and I've made a new line called class image win. And I, I just decided on this because that's essentially what this program does. Is it's, it puts an image in a window. And I'm inheriting from FL window. OK? OK, so the first thing I, I do here is I have to create the initializer uh, for my, my image win class. But I have to actually call now the initializer for the base class. But notice here on line 17 that when I do that, I have this variable called bh which is actually calculated before. So I should actually do this in my initializer uh, here. OK, so uh, notice I've just simply copied these two lines from uh, 17 and 18 up here. Also notice that pick has self in front of it, right? because I want that to be a part of the class. I want that to persist. But notice I did not put self in front of AR, the aspect ratio, or the box height. Because these are interim calculations, I actually don't need those to be stored in the class. I just need them to be stored temporarily until I create or I call the base class. So you know, usually I say the first thing you should do in the init function is call the base class init. I didn't do that here because I'm going to do it now. So I could, I could do this a couple of ways. One way I, one way I could do it is I could call uh, super uh, dot init. And then I would simply type in the uh, width and the height, right? Uh, or the other way in which I would do it is I would go fl window dot init. But if I do it this way, please remember, I have to use self in this case. And then I would also pass width and height as well. However, uh, there is something that I'm missing. And that is that, notice here, the, I'm setting the width to be 300 and the height to be box height. So therefore, uh, I'm going to fix this. OK, so there's something wrong with this. And I just noticed it. And the problem is, is that notice here in the initializer, I'm asking for a width and a height. The problem is, is that I'm actually calculating the height in this. So that's wrong. So therefore, I'm going to take out the height. So now my initializer is simply going to ask for a width. And guess what? And I, I could, let me just change this to that because I have W's here and I don't want it to look funny because now I'm going to have to change this 300 to width. So essentially now when I create this, I'm, I'm going to create it like this. I'm going to go um, app equals uh, Im image window. And then I'm going to say 300. And, I, and notice, so this is different from before. Because when I made it before, I, I specified here, right? By the way, the other thing which I should do is um, should I specify the the label, which is cat image? Um, I would say so. And in fact, let's also pass the image here, or should, yeah, let's pass this thing as well. So image win. So let's let's actually pass a few things. This is the nice thing about changing the the to what to what how exactly how we want it. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, cat image here, and then I'm also going to 
pass in the file name. So I'll say, cat, and it doesn't have to be in this order. Perhaps I should change it to the other order because maybe let's make the label the last thing. Uh, or no, let's, let's keep it that way. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's fine. So cat.png, I think, is the name of the file. Okay, so now we have, to, we have to come up here and we have to change this. So we go comma here and we'll say, well, after the width, what do we need? Uh, it's going to be the label and then after the label we have to have the uh, picture or the image let's call it IMG so now we've got we've got a couple of more things in here so now which which kind of nice here is I can just replace this with IMG okay and also, when I call the window here, I'm going to specify the width being the width here. The height, I've calculated it to be B BH. And also now, the label, I'm going to make it label. OK, so we can't do both here. So I'm getting rid of this super line. So we'll stick with that one for now. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to go uh, self. So I'm, I'm basically on line 25. I'm going to go self.begin. Now, why self? Because if you think, what is this class? It's a window. So I'm going window.begin, same as I'm doing here. So now I'm doing self.begin. And then I'm going, uh, I'm going to create a box here. So I'll go self.box equals FL box. I'll just, you know, copy paste that stuff. Okay, so I've basically copied everything using self. Notice I did not use self for BH because that was just an interim calculation. Um, but I am going to have the class store the picture and the box. So I put self in front of those. So I've basically just copied what was down here on lines like 28 to 33. Now I'm going to put uh, show, app.show not inside the class, and, and then I'm going to put uh, fl.run. Okay? Okay, so now let's, uh, let's delete everything else that's below here. Okay, so just I had to make sure that I had that uh, cat PNG in there, and so that's the program. And uh, if I run this now, it works just like it did before. And uh, now it's object oriented. OK? So this is a good example of how to learn object oriented style and also when to use self and when not. OK, so the next one I'm going to do is the slot machine. So let's take the slot machine here and let's uh, go and copy the code. And you can see that uh, I've already pasted it into pasted it into here, and made some space at the top. And so let's go ahead and convert this guy into an object-oriented style. Okay, so I made the initializer for my I I inherited from FL window and I called it slots. And uh, I could probably change it to slot machine, but don't want to make the variable too long. Um, I called then the first thing I did inside the initializer is I called the base class initializer, and also I made the default argument of none for the label. So <coughs> in fact, uh, here as you can see when I'm creating it, uh, I'm not specifying the label, but that's fine. I don't have to now because I have a default argument of none. So. Um, now, okay, so I simply copied this line uh, and put it up here, but I, I want these file names. Uh, question is, do I need these file names to be stored? And the answer is, no, I do not. Because I'm actually going to be, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. 
I do. And the reason why I do is because, uh, let's see here for a minute. Okay, so this is a really, really good uh, situation of, to determine if I actually need to use self or not. So let's take a look inside this callback. And if you'll notice in the callback, um, am I using F names, the file names? And you can see that I'm not actually using F names in here. So in other words, I don't need these file names to persist in the uh, in the class. In other words, if I get rid of self, that means when this function finishes, when def init finishes, in other words, once this function is run, this list of strings will disappear. If I want it to persist through all the callbacks and all the functions, then I have to put self in it. But in this case, I don't I don't need to put self. I could would anything be, would it be harmful if I put self? No, it wouldn't. But I'm trying to teach you to understand when you need to and when you don't need to. Okay, so uh, if you'll follow me here, I've decided that f names doesn't have to be self, but I, if you'll notice down here. I is the are the um, image list and I need that because I need the image list here inside the callback so I, ha I have to save these things or else I'm not going to be able to put the images on the buttons now instead of using a for loop I thought hey you know what this is just an append in a for loop I'm just going to use a list comprehension so if you remember how to do list comprehensions if you cannot then uh, go back to my CS1 course and look up list comprehensions. But essentially, here I am, I'm doing it. I'm, um, but, and when I'm copying it, instead of hard coding the size as I've done here on line 30 with um, the 200 and the 300, the 200 is actually coming from the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm taking this 650, taking away 50 and dividing it by three. So, so I know that my width is W, so that's 650, minus 50, which I've defined as the pull button width, P, PBW, and I take that away, and then I divide by three. Now, why am I floor divisioning it? Because I want my answer to be an integer and uh, not a floating point. And so therefore, uh, I'm setting the image width and the height. The height is hard-coded as the same height as the window. Okay, and now to finish off the list comprehension, and so there it is. I've done those three lines one, two, three in uh, up here in one line. Okay, and now the next thing. Okay, so now I have. Uh, come down here and taken all this code and pasted it up here because this only has to happen once so that's why I'm putting it in in it it don't only has to happen at the beginning so in this case though I need the buttons to be uh, li live with the class so they have to survive I'm not gonna put win here but I'm gonna go self because I'm actually inheriting from FL window and um, Again, here I'm going to make a pack that's going to survive. And now here, this is kind of wrong. I don't want uh, win.w here. I would go uh, self.w and I would go self.h. Okay, that's good. Um, pack.begin would be self.begin. And now I'll go into uh, for x in range three, yeah. Self self b dot append, and these are all self as well. That looks good. That looks good. Now I'm going to make the return button 
And you know what, since we've already put the 50 as the pull button width here as 50 up there, might as well fix this. This doesn't have to be self because um, it's a, just a temporary variable in this function alone. And I want to set the tooltip. So anything associated with a, a widget that I'm creating here, I need to call self on. And we're going to have to make that function. So now here's the thing about this pull function. This function is going to be belong in the class, so I'm going to have to put self in front of it as well. One of the common complaints of Python programmers is that they type self a lot. So I understand why. And so now, this is not a window here either, it's self. And um, we look good. Okay. Okay, so the next step is um, let's delete everything that we're already finished with. So let's take this stuff here. This is all done. We've converted all this so far. Um, so let's get rid of this. But we'll, we'll leave the, the scheme and um, we're gonna change we're gonna change this to let's say let's say our app and we'll say it's a slot machine and what's it going to accept well it's going to accept the width and the height and the label we don't have to worry about although we can put it in so let's do that so width is going to be 650 and the heights going to be 300 and we'll call it uh, slot machine. Okay, so then we've got a uh, slot machine there, app.show and FL run. Okay, so the last thing left to do here is um, we have to convert this function into uh, a function within the class. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so the first line is the shown. We don't need to make shown uh, with self because every time we call this callback function. Oh, by the way, notice it starts with self because it's inside the class. Notice the indentation. But shown doesn't actually need to be a class uh, method. So it doesn't need self because it's going to get wiped out. And every time we call this function, it's going to start from scratch. So not necessary to make it self in front. So let's copy there. OK, so what's left to do? Uh, I've finished the, the function pull CB. Okay, so uh, I, like I said, I didn't need shown to be self because it's just going to last in this function. And also I, the random number, is not going to be, uh, doesn't need to have self. It doesn't need to persist outside of this function. But I is outside of this function. So uh, the image list, I need to put self in front of that. The buttons exist outside of this function. So I need to put self in front of that. Okay, so so do the images. Um, but not these indices, okay? So not i. That's just in this function and then it's gone. So you can see where I've got self. Now for here, this, this used to be uh, win.redraw down here. You can see I've changed that to self. And then this, nothing here needs to be changed either. So I'm finished. Now all I need to do is uh, I need to get rid of this stuff because we don't need that anymore. And so that's my entire program. Okay, so from the beginning here, uh, I've, I've got my slot machine class. I've created it. All this inside in it happens when I create the slot machine and the pull CB uh, function, which is the callback uh, for the pull button, is in the class as well. And so down here, I just set the scheme and I set the create an instance of a slot machine here and I show the slot machine and I run it so let's see what this looks like okay so uh, I just had to fix one thing I had to go and grab those images again and I actually put them in uh, a subdirectory called pics and so I use this f string here and um, and that's it so now when I run it you can see that uh, it works just like it did before, except now my whole program is object-oriented.
Uh, hopefully I could win. I'm not sure if I will or not. I might give up. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this uh, solution. And let's see if I can still win. I'm still willing. There you go. Oh, it said it. Yay. So um, that's it. So there's my code. And uh, so we did two functions, two, so we did two programs today. We changed them to object-oriented programming. And um, I'll have the code for you on the website. See you later. Bye.